A special thank you to our main sponsor of the channel, Squarespace. More on that later in the video. <sighs> Variegation. It can be expensive, it can be exciting, but sometimes, just sometimes, it can be a pain in the butt. And I am here, I hear you, I am here to rant about it today. I have sold many a variegated plant and I couldn't help but notice there's just a few little issues within the plant community that just kind of keep cropping up and maybe, just maybe, I have a little bit of an issue with them. So here we are guys, you asked for it, here is your variegation rant. Okay, first things first, let's just tackle it head on. The half moon variegation. Now, do not let those Instagram pick me's fool you into thinking that these are a good thing when they are not. They are a nightmare and they are only good to you if you do not look at them, breathe at them, do anything, and you most certainly do not cut them. Just don't trust them. Don't trust them. I don't trust them. You should not trust them either. More often than not, when you propagate half moon leaves, you get variegation, no variegation, variegation, variegation. Obviously, the all variegated parts completely die off. So what you end up with is a plant that looks like a baby giraffe just standing up for the first time. Is that sexy? No, no. And then if that's not bad enough, people charge more, more for half moons. Sellers, I know why you're actually charging that money. It's because you yourself bought a half moon once and you've had to deal with the last two years of the pain and suffering of 27 cuttings and a lot of heartache later. You want your compensation. I completely get it. But what it means is this is a self-fulfilling prophecy because every single person that buys half moons goes through the same cycle. And then eventually, eventually, two years later, they come out with a beautiful half moon plant on Instagram. They're, hey, there you go. Would you like to buy it? Please buy it. And if you look very closely, you can just see a little twitch in their left eye because they need this. They've suffered enough. They've suffered enough. My second variegation ick on this list that we have is heat or sun stress. Oh my God, variegated micans specifically is a very good example. Can you please stop? Some of you guys really be out here wanting more money for plants that are literally charged and powered and potentially stressed by the sun for being more charged and potentially stressed by the sun. That is literally the same, that is literally the same as me paying more money for sunscreen because I'm more sunburnt. You feel me? Also wear sunscreen. The clue is in the name. It is sun stressed, guys. It is stressed. It's stressed. When do you ever pay more money when you're stressed unless it's for therapy or your body weight in fast food? Do you feel me? We don't need to be paying extra money for this. Please stop charging more for things that are stressed. I'm now stressed. Are you stressed? I actually feel a bit stressed just thinking about sun stress. Ah, oh, mint variegation. Mint variegation when it ain't. Oh my god, how often have you seen this in the community? Now in the case of, for example, Florida Ghost Mint, this is actually the opposite of the last point I made because you're actually paying more money at points for less. I will explain what I mean for those of you that are not in the know. Basically, you have Philodendron Florida Ghost and you have Philodendron Florida Ghost Mint. Why did I use the same image? Because it's the same shit, you feel me? There is no different. The only reason that the Florida Ghost Mint is not as white as the Florida Ghost is because it's exposed to either less light, less heat or whatever. Basically, it's a slight environmental difference and you can completely overhaul that by changing the environment. Thus, meaning you shouldn't be spending extra money on it. You certainly don't need a Florida Ghost and a Florida Ghost Mint. You feel me? They are the same. Do not be conned into spending more money because that's what they want you to do. And I believe it was in 2020. Sellers had a lot of luck doing that. A lot of luck doing that. I do not like this. And this is going to be an underpinning of the entire rant video. I do not like it. You are literally paying for less. Could we also talk about people literally claiming that there's mint monstera that isn't actually mint? Have you seen these people? Have you seen these people? I haven't seen these people to very recently. So you do have a genuine mint monster, right? That's fine, that's by the by. That's not what I'm getting at. You have other people that will literally just say, and I mean they will just say that their monster is mint, and it is not exhibiting any mint on the leaf, like not even a little bit, not even a little bit. And they will just be like, fly, monkeys, fly, pay the money, pay the money, it's mint. No, stop it, I'm watching you. Stop it, stop it, stop, stop, stop. 
stop. I don't mean to start any fights here or insult y'all watching this, but generally, if a Monstera isn't showing any mint, please do not go and assume it's mint and pay for the mint. You feel me? I, I don't know why I'm saying it, but I feel like these things are sold, so people do need the PSA, to be quite honest. If it's not showing consistent mint on the leaves, please do not pay the money. Don't pay the money. Don't pay the money. Okay, moving on. You ready for this one? This is one of my biggest, the biggest possibly pet peeve or ick or whatever you want to call it on this list. This one just takes it all for me. And that is, can you please, can you please, can you please stop calling plants stupid, stupid names? Stop calling it a princess diamond vanilla Spartan butchug when it isn't. It isn't. What is it? It isn't that. I know it isn't that. What you're trying to do, cast a new Harry Potter spell. No, call it what it is. And if anyone wants to know why I hate it so much, not only does it just get silly sometimes, I know y'all have seen some names on scrolling on Facebook going, all right, that's cool. I see how they've got there with that one. Some of them are just absolutely wild, literally wild. I won't let it slide. And again, it's for the similar reason as the other point. And that is because anyone that does not know any better will literally just pay the money thinking it's different. It's just taking advantage of people and I don't like it. And I know that we can say on occasion, you know, the buyer should know this as well, but it's hard. It's hard when people are throwing the names out there and other people mindlessly comment on the posts, because you all do, I've seen it, going, oh my God, that's so amazing. I would love one of these. You have one probably. Most of you say that you have AJ a pink princess, but now you want this one. I did see on Facebook the other day, one sexy pink princess. And I literally think I wrote that sexy, but what I will not have is someone calling it something other than a pink princess, cause it ain't, you know what I mean? Literally, we need to calm down with these names. It's getting stupid now. It's literally getting stupid. From me to you guys, you can take your Monstera frosted doorknob and shove it up your philodendron chocolate delight. Mm-hmm. Okay, this next one isn't actually a people one, which, hey, that's, that's actually the first one on this list, is it not? But the next one I have to talk about, guys, is the burning, the burning, the burning, the burning, the burning, the burning. It comes without reason sometimes. It could be light. It could be light, it could be too much light, it could be too much feed, it could be the humidity. Nobody really knows. Ask the oracle, spin the wheel. What do you want to do? Place your bets, roll the dice. Because I don't know either. I don't know either. And I've done this for years and I can still just guess. Because is that not all what we're doing anyway? You just have to guess. And you could have the most beautiful plant. And you're, have you ever done this? Have you ever done this? You're getting ready to take a photo of it. For me, that would be more to take a photo to sell, for example. But in your case, it might be to sell. Or you might just be trying to take a sexy photograph for Instagram. And you think, I'll take that tomorrow. I'll take that tomorrow. And you come back tomorrow. And the thing is a Dorito. And now you've ruined it. And you're genuinely, you're genuinely thinking, well, should, should I cut it off? Should I, should I Photoshop it off? Should I just put something in front of it? It's, it's done now. And I completely get it. Some are worse than others. 100%, 100%. For example, stay away, stay clean away from the Monstera Peru unless you want a plant that looks like you put a bar of soap in the microwave for 20 minutes. Don't, just, just take it from me, don't buy it. Don't buy it, I sell it, but don't buy it. Just don't. If you're looking for a fast and reliable way to create and run your own website, you should give Squarespace a try. Squarespace is an all-in-one solution for creating your own website from scratch using a variety of modern and sleek templates. They're really customizable so you can have a website that's unique to your brand in no time. I've used Squarespace now for well over a year for the Red Plant Shop and it's working really, really well for me. If you don't quite know where to start, you can always use the inbuilt wizard which will guide you towards the recommended templates for the kind of website you would like to make. Once you have your selected template, follow the instructions on screen and you'll be set up in no time. If you want to create a really sleek looking website, either for an online store or maybe you're working on your own blog, check out squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com forward slash Kaylee Ellen to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Thank you very much, Squarespace. And back to the video. <laughs> Back to hating on sellers, back to hating on sellers. But number six, I've got to talk about guys, it's the all white top cuts. Why, why, why? And you know what, you know what? I've been on camera a lot in the past saying, look, let's not assume the seller knows, blah, 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 blah. Listen, I literally, I completely take that back now. I've completely, I rescind that remark because it is 2023, y'all know now, y'all know now. There's been enough out there. There's been enough chance for you to change your behavior. 
behavior. So literally, you guys need to stop selling all white top coats. It's quite simple. Plants need chlorophyll to survive. For any of you that don't know, just think chlorophyll equals green, and then we're good. So plants need green in order to survive. An all white plant is gonna die. And this is why, this is why they are top cuts and not single leaves. Have you ever noticed that? Have you ever noticed that? They tend not to be single leaves. And that is because the sellers know. The sellers know. Because how often do you get, answer me this, how often do you get variegated monstera sold as a top coat? It's not that often. It's more commonly sold via single leaves. But all of a sudden when it's white, we get the top coat. Why? Because y'all know it's gonna die. Y'all know it is. So there's no point propagating it further. You just want it off and gone. That's why you're selling it. And it's really quite disgusting. I have to tell you. In all seriousness, it is quite disgusting. You are literally selling death. You're selling death. It's a, it's a bit dramatic, but okay. Oh, are you ready for this next one? Temperature affecting variegation. I am looking at you, Philodendron Pareso Verde. Now, don't get me wrong, there are others, there are others, but this one was a big one for me. This, I had a lot of them and I learned a lot very quickly. Someone should have really given out an instruction manual on those things because they are impossible, impossible to make absolutely perfectly happy consistently and pump out everything you need from them. Because I can't sell green. I can't sell green. They might be green and it might not be my fault, but I can't sell green. And it's really difficult to get get that balance just right. It's a little bit like trying to get the right level of colour and crunchiness on toast. Also, PSA, how old were you when you worked out that those numbers on the toaster actually correspond to the amount of minutes you would like to toast your toast for and not, not for how toasty it is? Because I was today years old. Okay, another one, sport variegation. Now you can have sport variegation, that's absolutely fine, but some of y'all really be out here taking the Michael, and I'm not even kidding, I am not even kidding. Some of y'all really need to calm down. You need to calm down. So I have a couple of examples to show you because it's easier. So this here that I'm showing you is not sport variegation. Say it with me, jump up and down with me, guys. It is not sport variegation. That shit needs to persist. And I tell you something, pro tip, variegation isn't usually blocked like that, right? There's a little tip if you're trying to genuinely work out what variegation looks like. Most of the time, variegation looks, it looks pretty obvious and it tends to be, not always, but it tends to be quite rounded and soft at the edge, right? Not saying that that is the only definitive way of telling, but this blocky shit ain't it. It ain't it, guys. What is this, Minecraft? No, that, that is not variegation. Y'all have to stop trying to sell that as variegation. You're pissing me off. You're pissing me off. Have some dignity, come on, come on now. Because I bet you can't show me the mother plant that does it all the time, and if you do, you might wanna get that shit checked. Y'all can't seem to show me how it persists down the leaf and it starts to look more and more like variegation. You can't seem to do it, you have the one you sell it, na 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 na. You know, you know when you do it. I know you know. It's obvious that you know that shit won't persist. Pack it in again. I'm watching you. Next one, it kind of blends in a little bit because the last one could be this one and I want to talk about viral variegation. Yes, really, listen, all right, it does happen. Happens less now because more people are aware, but certainly when I did it, we were kind of less aware because it wasn't really kicking in on the plants at the time that we considered rare because we didn't have as much experience with them because the market wasn't as saturated and blah, 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 blah. We didn't know as much. We know more now. That's fine. But literally, I have done this. I paid an extortionate amount of money for a, I think it was a varicosum that I thought was variegated. Ew, gross, it wasn't, it was viral. That's a very expensive virus. Honestly, guys, you just have to be careful when it comes to stuff like this. And again, my previous point stands, if it looks a bit blocky, it's probably not variegation. You feel me? It's probably not. Listen, this is very, very much like dating. If it doesn't look right, it's probably not. Stop ignoring the red flags, stop texting him back and move on. Oh, and probably get the virus checked, right? Stay safe out there, seriously. The next one on the list, I couldn't really do the video without this and I nearly forgot this, but this is chemical variegation. Could I really do a video without mentioning that? I probably couldn't. But when I say chemically induced variegation, I'm in fact not talking about the regular stuff that Thailand just has everything in their nurseries, hard and fast, butt chugging. That's absolutely fine because we're happy to pay for that. Am I right, guys? Hmm. 
I'm talking, of course, about the Pink Congo, the Pink Dark Lord, the Pink Mykons, the Pink Princess Diamond Butchug, whatever it is, right? I'm talking about all of those things, and I'm not going to go into it on this video, because I do have a video all on it. So I'm going to save you the hassle. I'm just going to link the video down there if you want to know. But I do have an entire video on this problem. So if you want to check that in the description, feel free. Most of the time, though, if the leaves are all pink, this is very much like falling in love with rose-tinted glasses on, right? Because with rose-tinted glasses on, on red flags or simply flags. I actually find that quite insightful. That's one of my favorites. It's a good one. Okay, I've got another one for you. And this one's just, this one's just be, being straight up mean, really. And that is variegation that looks gross. It just looks gross. I, it could just look viral. It could just look nasty, you know? And if they hadn't already made all the money on this, I could probably expect another threat of a solicitor's letter through my door. But I gotta talk about the Adansoni I Mint, guys. Because seriously, that shit, personal opinion, allegedly, okay? But that honestly looks like something that you left in the bottom of a bin to go off. Am I wrong? Am I wrong? It didn't look well, all right? Again, not even saying whether it has a virus or not, that is not my point, so come for me all you may, but you need to put those bullet points in your letter, okay? What I'm saying is, it looks dodgy. So why would you want it? Because we associate those patterns with viruses. Whether it has a virus or not, I'm not debating it, okay? But it looks like shit, and I'm not even just gonna rag on that, because I actually find that nearly every single, I don't know why it specifically is, but nearly every single anthurium, I find the same. I find that looks really nasty. It's hard to get a nice looking variegated anthurium. Most of the time, I kind of feel like the variegation on an anthurium looks a little bit like when you spill bleach on your favorite jeans, okay, and you realize and you try to mop it up, sponge it down, whatever, before the damage is done, only to realize an hour later that you just, you didn't, you didn't hit your A game and now you're left with a splodge. That's essentially what I feel like most of them look like. They're kind of a hot mess. Just my opinion. Right, so in preparation for this video, I also asked you guys on Instagram what annoyed you about variegated plants in general, and I've written down some responses because I thought they were quite interesting and I thought they added to this quite nicely. So, other people's X are as follows. The variegation changes to what looks like a bird has shit all over your plant. You know what? I haven't planned this, but that ties in so beautifully with what I just said about variegated anthurium. It it looks real bad sometimes. Real bad sometimes. It's not every plant. Philodendron kind of have their shit down, it's okay. But certain plants, it ain't very nice. When a variegated plant just won't variegate, so now you have 50 reverted plants and no variegation. Mm-hmm. Yep. I've lost count of how many times that's happened in here. Quite possibly with Monstera Peru, quite possibly with all kinds of plants, actually. That's pretty popular, and I feel like we've all felt that burn before. I feel like that's something we can all bond together with, you know what I mean? Because no one wants to buy the green shit either, so you don't feel like you can throw it because you've invested in it, and hey, there's that weird pathological tick in your brain that's like, oh, but in six months it might come back. So you just keep growing it and growing it and growing it. And then, eventually, you might give it away or sell it to someone going, it's fine. And then the next leaf they get out in their care. What happens, guys? It's variegated. You can't win. It's a curse. It's a curse. Variegate plants. I honestly believe variegate plants are sat up there laughing at us. They really are. Good variegation on the stem and petiole are not translating to the leaf. Oh, oh my god. I'm talking to you, variegated gloriosum, right? I have this problem all the time with my variegated gloriosum. I just... Ah, my nodes on a lot, not all, but a lot of my variegate gloriosum are amazing. And I don't understand the science of how it just pumps out something that looks nothing like that. I honestly make it make sense because I, I, I'm at a loss. I don't get it. Ooh, the variegated part of the leaf goes clear and melts. Oh my God. This happened with my eel manii. It's happened with some variegated alocasia. It's nasty, man. It's, it's horrible. It's, oh. It's awful. When they get stuck and rip while unfolding or rip while you try to help them when they are stuck. Now, I really, really want to personally victimize Philodendron Pink Princess for this one. Because how many, how many of you has this happened to? I actually call it, I have a name for it, I call it Cinderella Syndrome. 
okay? Because, and there is a picture somewhere, I think, of Cinderella where I think one of the ugly sisters is trying to get her foot into Cinderella's shoe and it's buckling, and that is literally what happens. I give my pink princesses enough humidity, but every so often they'll still do it. My whip aways have actually been doing it as well recently, and it's very, very irritating. It's supposed to be a humidity thing, but I think sometimes it can be light as well. It's just, it's really annoying. It's unsightly, because if you miss it, you're in a bit of trouble. I completely relate to that. Ooh, this one's a bit subjective. People calling plants like Philodendron Brazil and Ficus Tineki, Tineki, don't know how to say that, variegated. Oh. It's tough because they kind of are, but I get what you mean. It's kind of like, if it's common and it's sort of naturally like that and whatever, it's just a pass, we don't class it as that. It is very subjective, but I, I am kind of on your side. I kind of am, because I'll be honest with you, if I saw someone calling them that, I would probably snigger to myself. So just going to be honest. I, I think I'm on your side with that. Let me know in the comments whether you would or wouldn't call that. If, for example, a philodendron Brazil, is it variegated or not? Answers in the comments. I actually want to see if it's just me that is the asshole. Variegated plants that just look all deformed and unhealthy. Looking at you, a medium, medium, variegated. Oh my god, you could not have picked a better plant to demonstrate that. I have sold a lot of these in the past, and I tell you something, I'll tell you no, no problem very openly. I cannot stand the sight of them. I think they are one of the ugliest things going. Now, if you like a medium medium, by the way, take a moment to just appreciate the all green version and the silver slash blue version. Very nice. What do you want the variegated version for? Because it's nasty. It looks like a handkerchief someone literally sneezed in, crumpled up and threw on the floor and then maybe stood on it and then maybe picked it up and then I don't know what they did with it. But they don't look very good. I'm looking over there because I feel like I might have a rogue one somewhere that's dead. I've definitely got the carcasses of some on the wall. You might not see it, but underneath this up here is a spiritus. On the wall there, you might see a little bit of old root, like right here. That is off those plants because I let them grow up the wall because they're so ugly. Didn't want to deal with them, didn't want to cut them, didn't want to propagate them, didn't want to sell them. I'm pretty sure I let them grow to the point where they just died because I hate them that much. You could not, you could not have picked a better plant to illustrate that point, honestly. Honestly, when people like a plant just because it's variegated, I kind of get you. Now, what I think you are not talking about is people that, you know, like a green version of a plant, but like the variegated version more, like how a lot of us talk. I, I don't think you mean that. I think you literally just decide to have a plant because it's variegated. But I think it's not really down to variegation at that point. It's just down to following the fashion quite blindly because a lot of people do it, right? I think you could say that about like, oh, buying something because it's pink or buying something because it has splits in it or you know what I mean. So I think it's more symptomatic of that. But I, I kind of agree each to their own. But then again, although I agree, I do videos on this channel about investment plants and I do believe if you, I do believe, I will start that again. I do believe you can buy a plant, not really love it, buy it for investment purposes, propagate it and sell it. If you want to do that, heck honey, you go do it. You get that coin. There is nothing wrong with that. Absolutely not. But I do understand what you're getting at with just being a bit irritated that people just want things because it's that. Do you know what I mean? Because a lot of these people, it's not even a propagate and sell thing. It's just, I feel like people don't always know what they like and dare I say it, they're easily influenced. <laughs> But I think I know what you mean. Oh, side note, okay? The amount of people that ragged on this plant, specifically when I never said give me an ick about a specific plant, but the amount of people that were in my messages about a specific plant was so overwhelming, and I mean overwhelming, I have to tell you about it. Guys, are you all right? Because your Florida beauties don't seem to be. Now, honestly, and I'm, I'm not exaggerating, there were so many of you that specifically just chose to bring this up. Now, I I haven't had that problem with mine for a while. Mine are, you can't see them, but here there are three shelves full of propagations of Florida Beauty. And honestly, they're all quite reasonable. So over time, I've led myself to think, oh, actually, Florida Beauty is fine. And I've kind of forgotten the trauma that I went through in the very beginning. If you guys remember when I had a Florida Beauty, those of you that have been with me this long on the channel will remember. I love you too. It's been a while, but I had one that was doing this very same shit. It was doing half moons when I got it, and then it would go green, yellow, green, yellow, green, yellow. And it was a nightmare. Since I've bought some really good 2020, you know, roided up stock, shall we say, from Thailand. And 
and they've actually been really good. I have to say they have been really good. So I think my, my opinion on Florida Beauty is a bit skewed because honestly, mine are doing great. But I, I am saying this as someone that probably had 20 to 30 mother plants. So I guess what I'm saying is, I believe in this case, the majority, i.e. you guys are probably right. And me, the one that for once ever, let's be honest, has had good experience with a plant. I think I'm probably not right. I think I've got lucky. But I had to tell y'all because it was personal. You made it personal about this plant. I have to tell you, you really, really did. Before we finish, guys, all joking aside, if you actually do want to buy variegated plants, here are just a really, really quick couple of tips because I don't want y'all to fall into half of these traps. I really don't. I'm ranting about it. You guys know that I don't want this to happen to you. My first tip with variegated plants, honestly, this is the best tip. This is like the single best tip is that chaos rules all. Let it sit for a second. Chaos rules all. What am I talking about? I'm talking about the fact that variegation generally is pretty chaotic and you can never be sure of what something's going to do. You can make good guesses based on good things, but how many times has that just betrayed us? It is what it is. Like buying a half moon. Heck, it might keep busting out half moons. I'm not saying it never does, but it tends to do something else. That's not mean to say it won't. You are always going to take a risk when you buy something variegated. It's just what it is. It is large largely a dice roll. The amount of things I've propagated from where the leaf and the node has had plenty in it and what I've got from it was just it happens. There's not a lot we can do about it at the end of the day. So you always need to keep in the back of your mind, I'm paying all this money, but chaos rules. Chaos rules all. And then make a decision based off that. Now, my second tip, if you want to go for variegation, you're like, yeah, okay, well, I, I want to take the risk. I'm good. But is there anything I can do to just sort of help me take that risk? Yes, I believe so. My answer would be, and you do not have to listen to me, but my answer would be, do not buy half moons. Buy something that a lot of people refer to as like a marbled variegation. Essentially just variegation that sort of is across both sides of the leaf. Maybe nothing over 50%, maybe a bit less than that if you're inexperienced. I wouldn't go over 50% personally, I think you, it's a bit risky there. But do not go for a half moon. Do go for a plant with a semi-even distribution of variegation throughout the leaf. If you can see it on the petiole and you can see that around the node, even better. But the leaves are your, your guide, I guess, as to what's going on. So the more, in my experience, Experience, the more spread you've got on either side of that leaf, the safer you are. It's not guaranteed because chaos rules, but you're safer. Another tip, buy plants with multiple leaves. If you're really unsure and you don't understand how something's behaving, AG, a great thing to buy would be a head cutting of a plant. They're probably the best ones to buy. They will be more expensive. There is a reason. One, more leaves. Two, the growth point is it's just going to grow nicer because it's already growing and you don't have like the nodule of where it's being cut and yada, yada, yada. And three, because it's becoming predictable. You haven't interrupted its path, really. It's going to be fine. So that's another thing I would do if you can. Yes, it will be more money, but if you really want to be sure, you could do that. You could buy something with multiple leaves. My last tip, if you're super, super worried and you just think, oh my gosh, it's a minefield. I don't know. Do I even care? I don't, what, what, what should, should I care? I don't know. Do, you know, whatever. Just don't buy variegated plants. I'm serious. Just don't. Just don't. Wait till there's something you really like and you think, yeah, whatever. Judge it on a plant by plant basis. You don't have to buy something. You know what I mean? You really don't. I, I understand I run a shop, guys, but it's, it's just not like that on this channel. It's not. I think if I was actually trying to sell stuff, I'd probably stop shit talking all the time. Do you know what I mean? If you don't want to buy something variegated, if it's too stressful for you, too risky for you, just don't. Just don't. It's that simple. Your Instagram feed will be fine. Honestly, no one's going to care. And that concludes my variegation rant in accordance with your little pet X as well, in accordance with a couple of tips at the end because I didn't want to leave it on a bad note. But yes, these things about variegation really do irritate me. They do. They just do. And I'm sure they irritate a lot of you. Let me know if there's any of them I've missed because if I get enough of them, I will do another video on these. If you want me to drop any other of this style of video, so some kind of rant video about another aspect of having plans, that is absolutely cool. Whether it's seller specific, buyer specific, anything like that, let me know. I'd be really, really glad to do it. And I actually had a lot of fun making this. So if you like this video, please do leave a like on it. It lets me know that I did in fact make a video that you could stomach. If you are not already subscribed, I would absolutely adore it if you could do so. You should find that button beneath this video on the top of my channel if you are on desktop. I do have other videos on many other topics and you should be able to find them very easily on my channel if you go and search. And that is it for this week's video, guys. I would love you and leave you. I cannot wait to read your comments and I will see you in the next one. Bye.